Come on. He's doing great in the Philippines. He's, he's uh, doing the kingdom in the, uh, in the entertainment business. So thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that. Anyway, we missed you last Sunday. Did you miss us? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, before that, you know, we had a great time and really it's a great uh, privilege going out. Just what we did is that all the pastor, major pastor, are went out. Instead of celebrating our Thanksgiving, we celebrate the plans for 2015 for River of Life. We are so excited and pumped up because there's so much that God's going to do in 2015. And we will not wait on the end of the year. We're already planning for everything for 2015. And boy, we had a great time. But um, let's have, some of you missed that last Sunday's video. So I want to put it back, the video, if you can do that, Danny. The last video. Okay, that's the video that we have. Oh, that's, that's me. Okay, let her go. Good morning, River of Life! Hello, Rofers. We are currently here in New Brunswick! We are currently doing our 2015 yearly planning. So we should all be excited facing the New Year 2015 because God has something great for this coming year. And we surely do miss you. I hope you enjoyed the service. Yeah, what they said. <laughs> All right, so that's the, the real one, okay? Now, do you know how many take we did that? Do you want to see the bloopers? Come on, you want to see the bloopers? Can, you, can we have the bloopers? Okay, there you go. One, two, three, action. Happy Thanksgiving! No, oh, really? Wait, you should, like, everybody should get it. Make sure everybody's showing. Oh. In New Brownsville, oh, I you can't say, say Brown. New Brownfell. There you yeah. go. There. Brown. Brown. Good morning, River of Life. No, you don't have to say that anymore. What can I say? Okay, yeah, what can I say? Singing mode. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> 2015 yearly planning. <laughs> <laughs> where are you? Still on? <laughs> okay, so you answer this question. You where just are cut you? Him. Find it nicely, okay? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and what do you want to say to them? Say? Just oh, like we then? just want to greet you. Okay. Uh, what? Happy. Are you so <laughs> what you guys can say? <laughs> Hey! Yeah. We are doing our 2015 year planning, and that's all for you. So we'll see you on next Sunday. There you go. <laughs> hallelujah! Hallelujah! You know, we've been in the uh, in the series, joy series, for the last several weeks. And did you enjoy Pastor Pete last Sunday? Yes, he's, uh, man, I, I just love this man. He's just my brother, and he's just, he's really a great man of God. And um, he flew this morning to the Philippines. And so uh, in Christmas, I'll be flying tomorrow morning with my wife, my family. It's been like, seven, how many years? 17 to 18 years that we have been, been together as uh, uh, brothers and sisters. So that's going to be our first time to be together. And you pray for us. And we're going to go to Tacloban. To do a mission work over there. And, and, and also we have uh, uh, our, our brother Buboy and also Atites going with us. They, we're going to go first and then we go to Tacloban on the 15th. And we're just going to share and sense what God is doing over there. We are really doing great for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just uh, bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we just, ex just want to thank you for your presence, God. We thank you for your great power. I pray, Father God, that you stimulate something in our very hearts this morning. Not just an ordinary sermon. I pray it's going to be a powerful sermon that you'll be lifted up. Not, not me, but you, God. I just thank you, Father God, that they will understand the word, Father God. Lord, we bless you and we honor you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Are you ready? Come on. Are you ready to hear the word of God? You know what? It's really hard when you're here in the pulpit, and, and I can see all your faces. Your, your, your faces are excited, and some of them are not excited, or some of them are really, you're going to be discouraged. So by helping me to preach this morning, by saying, amen, yes, that's good, pastor. Can you do that? 
Amen. Even though you want to fake it, fake it. Fake it until you make it. You know, sometimes you don't, the word of God comes to you and, and mm, I don't know how to respond to the word of God. But sometimes you just, yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Okay, we are talking about joy. Who has the joy in their heart? Come on. Who has the joy in their heart? Come on, let me ask you. Do you have the joy in your heart? Come on, you, you have the joy in your heart. Down, down in your heart, you have joy. Joy. Uh, God is telling us, this is a very foundation of, uh, of God's want to do in 2015. Without joy, we cannot prevail for 2015. Without joy, we can even celebrate Christmas. It's the joy is so important. I believe God has placed specifically joy this series so that we can really, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, joy, I'm going to conclude that joy today. We'll finish that today. So we're going to have a great time. So uh, my verse will be in Isaiah 54, verse 1 to 3. And I preached this many years ago about this verse. You remember what's the verse in a minute. But let me talk to you about Isaiah first. What's Isaiah? Isaiah is a prophet. Okay, he's a prophet, a man of God who wrote the, the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah is a powerful book because there's so much prophetic word. When we say prophetic word, those words have been about to come. They say about to come. So in Isaiah, we'll start with Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 speak about the prophetic word of God, his love for you, for the church. He speak. That's why if you are discouraged, Read Isaiah 53, 54, and 55. You're, you're, that's your Zolov. That's going to be your Xanax. <laughs> Isaiah 53 says that he was bruised for my iniquities. He was wounded for my transgression. That Jesus, he's, imagine a man of God many, many, many years. I don't know any... Hundred years to a thousand years, I don't many years that he prophesied that Jesus is coming and 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 be a, a, on the cross to redeem mankind. Isaiah fifty three about his love for you, his love for you. That's Isaiah fifty three. Now Isaiah fifty four is about the church. It's talking about the church. You are the church. The building is not the church. You are the church, Ian. You are the church. We are the church, the body of Christ. Can I hear amen to the church? Amen. Say, I am the church. I am the church. Again, I am the church. I am the church. Okay. So, you are the church. So, now, Isaiah, okay, prophesy. Isaiah 54 about the church where now is prophesying you. <laughs> He's prophesying you. For many, many years, he wants to see it's going to happen in this time and age. So, let's talk about Isaiah. Isaiah, when he prophesied this to the people, do you know they're in the waters, the the darkest place in the life of the Israelites. The worst, according to history. Yes, I believe when they're in Egypt, and then through disobedience, through partaking to the world. That's why God sent you to the world, not to make that world, you partake the world. But be a, a light and a salt to the world. The problem is what, what we do is when we mingle so much the world, we be like them. Wherein God called you to infect them and influence them. Amen. And, and it's so easy to be, ch to be churchy in the church. Do you agree? Amen. But the, 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 the real thing is when we said Joshua or Joss in the Philippines. That's the real Christianity. The real Christianity, bro, when you go to the old field. And you by yourself, 
the real, real Christianity, when you go to your patients and, and problematic family, are you still Christian? The real Christianity is when young people, you go and, and, and go to, to your school and you trying, you are trying to imitate those worlds. No, man. You have a specific identity. That's why I was so blessed with uh, Rachel. She said about identity first. Do you know your identity? Man, so much. God is talking about the church. You are the church. So now Isaiah is prophesying to the worst scenario because of disobedience of these people. We do that, isn't it? We always disobey God. What happened is they were captured by the Babylonian. So they were exiled from their country to their other places. They were terrorized, beaten, ebolized. Ebola, okay? So much problem, and there's no light. They're in depressed situation. Have you been in a situation right now that you are in the bottom pit? Are you right now that everything you see is dark? Let's just be real now. There's no hope. You try and try, and there's nothing. Just everything is just dark. And God is prophesying to you right now. This verse is for you. This verse is very real for you. So let's, let's, are you ready for the word? Yeah. Come on. Are you ready for the word? Yeah. Are you ready for the now word of God for you? Yeah. Whatever situation you are having right now, God's word is always present and a now word. So these Israelite people are, they were captured, who are who were prosperous before, and now they're serving. They're a servant. And, and, and it's just a pitiful situation. So let's see. This is the word for you. Shout for joy. Let me pray for your ears in Jesus' name. That's Pastor Man. That's the youth pastor. That, that's why sent your, sent your kid to this radical woman of God. And Josh, they're doing a great thing, okay? Get my here for my young people here. Come on, young people. Campus culture. How about my college people? Anyway, how are my adult people? Yeah. Come on, Jeff Rogan. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why, you know, I usually don't have breakfast. I said, and my wife said, how come you're taking three eggs this morning? Because I'm going to preach. <laughs> usually, I don't have breakfast, you know. I, that's why I keep this figure. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, by faith. <laughs> I'm going to eat in the Philippines a lot of, lot of stuff. So I want to prepare myself. So I, don't, I didn't eat because I just going to, I want to I wanna give it all. I want to give, I just, this is my workout. And Sunday is where I work out. Shout for joy. Imagine, <laughs> everything's dark and then you said, shout for joy. That's just weird. Everything is nothing there, sickness, problem, no money and everything. You don't know what to do, no job and everything. And you just shout for joy. Sometimes the Lord is crazy. Doesn't make sense. Hey Amen. I've been through a lot this year. And, say, and still I said, shout for joy, Bobby. Shout for joy, O oh barren one. God acknowledge that you're barren. He knows. He knows that you need, you need something. Shout for joy, O barren one. Now the church was featured as a barren because there's no fruitfulness. No productivity. There's nothing. It's no money, dead, everything in the dark age. And, so, and that's what they call barren. Because when you are barren in the time of, of that time, you're considered under curse. 
and, and they will ridicule you and you're considered outcast if you don't multiply. So now there's a prophetic word that God is saying to you. That's why, boy, there's a word for God for you. He said, shout for joy, O barren one, you who have become, born no child. For those people that, that have a child, God is saying that you're going to have a child. He said there that, break forth into joyful shouting. He did not say, break forth in a in, in whisper. Little, little boys, precious, precious. <laughs> but the Bible says, what? Break forth. Get out from your situation. Get out from your depression. Get out from your sadness. Get out from your poverty. Get out from your sickness. Get out from your illness. Break forth. Break forth. You need to help your body. Come on, break out. Get out from your situation. Lose yourself. You need to help yourself. Like, come on. This is not your life. Yeah. You're supposed to live like this way. This way you are called to walk in the God way. Yeah. Break forth into job with shouting. And cry aloud. Yeah. He endures crying. You need to cry. That's why you are, this church is, uh, we welcome freedom. You're free to cry. You're free to shout. Break forth in joy. Okay? Here, you who have not travailed. If you are pregnant and you're about to deliver a baby, you're going to travail. And boy, push. For the sons of the desolate one will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman. Somebody's not getting this. This is the promise, bro. This is the promise. That for the sons of the desolate one, the one who are in darkness, the one is in sin, the one who is depressed, the one in negative. The one is in low position. The word of God says, you're going to break forth in joy, but I will make an increase to you. Your boss will not make the increase. God will make an increase for you. God, the problem is we, don't, we try to do to multiply our, our stuff. Man, the, the God is asking you only is to break forth in joy. And then he's going to do increase. It's not your responsibility to do the increase. It's God's responsibility. Are you getting something in this preaching? He said here, see, the one who are fertile, who have a husband, they have more children. Here, the Israelites who doesn't have a husband because of the multiple sin that they have, their husband left or the husband who represents God left momentarily because of their sin. Sin will make you away from God. But God always going to reach out for you. He's prophesying a powerful faith word for you. My God, he's prophesying. Our big God, full of faith, has faith in your situation. Now, you just need to persuade yourself and your thinking mind to be persuaded about the word of God. Amen? So, this in the, for the sons of the desolate one will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman. This is a prophecy that God is about to do. Suddenly came. He's a God of suddenly. You know, for the last month, you've been looking for a job, you're looking for a job, and suddenly you got it. That's my God. He's a God of suddenly. 
you are looking for this, uh, this, this good looking man or you know I'm trying to look for a amen that should be there they're looking for you okay amen that should be amen <laughs> okay where am I now <laughs> suddenly he's a God of suddenly you know what when I don't know God loves to do suddenly you know he loves to do wonders He loves signs and wonder. He, he loves to surprise you. Who, wanna, who wants here to be surprised by God? <laughs> you know, my kids were surprised. Just really surprised us because nobody knows about his coming. He told us, uh, you know, he told me, but specifically uh, my children know. So when we are eating in Dirty Owl and he, show, uh, he showed up and he just, <laughs> like, the, like the expression. Do you know that's only a man? How much more God? I want to be surprised by God. He wants to place wonder. I am a daddy. And I love to surprise my kids. I love to surprise Brianna. I love to surprise Caleb. How much more God? He is, wants to. Pour out his goodness. He, he, we, we share it today. He loves to pour out his goodness to you. Oh, yummy, yummy. Second here is this. God is author of divine acceleration. He's a God of divine acceleration. What takes a year, now it takes only a month. What takes a month... What takes a month is going to take only a week. What I take a week is going to take a day. What I take a day is going to take one hour. What an hour takes a, take a minute. And what I take a minute is a second. And suddenly, and suddenly, and suddenly, and suddenly, God pour out his blessing. Suddenly, he healed you. Suddenly, he's opened the door for you. Suddenly, he healed you. Suddenly, he take up your addiction for drugs. Suddenly, he began to change you. Suddenly, your husband got changed. Suddenly, he's the God of suddenly. He's a God of suddenly. Divine acceleration. He's doing that. But the only thing that needs a divine, that doesn't have a divine acceleration is our character. Character needs to be refined by the word of God. Second, by a situation. Sometimes we want the acceleration, but our heart is not ready. Our heart is not so ready that he wants to bless you. He wants to give you a job. He even wants to give you a, your, your future uh, partner, your future wife. But because, yes, but because sometimes you are not yet ready when he gave you the partner, he begins to prioritize that partner than him. Man, God wants to give you something, but he knows the future. Amen? He's a God of suddenly, he authored divine acceleration. I want divine acceleration for 2015. Yeah. Amen. Are you ready? Yeah. That's only my introduction for my real text. Yeah, my real text is here. <laughs> Isaiah 54, verse 2. Uh, mm, 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 mm. This is so good. So he's promising in Isaiah 51, 51. Uh, 54 verse 1, you shout for joy, you get up from your depression, get up from your sadness, help yourself because Christ inside of you. But pastor, I cannot make it. You can make it because Christ inside of you. Quit depending on your situation. Quit depending on yourself. What you need to do is depending on the Holy Spirit. Say, I can do this. I can do all things to Christ who strengthened me. Amen. After that, after that, he's going to do the increase. Now, he's not yet done. He's asking you in verse 2. He said, enlarge the place of your tent. <laughs> enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out your curtains of your dwellings. 
Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your pegs. Let me explain to you. To understand this, the Israelites, they're a nomad people. They, they move. And what they do, they have a tent. The tent, have somebody play, uh, build a tent or place a tent here? Maybe in South Padre Island or some, anybody? Girl Scout will know how to do that. Man, where are my hands? Nobody doing a tent yet. Okay. So in, in putting a tent, in, you know, it's taking like hard work. Okay. And there is, uh, in, the, in, back, in, the, it's like in the time of the Jew, Jewish time, they put a tent. And if you are rich, you have a bigger tent. If you are uh, moderate, it depends upon the big of your tent, the size of your tent. Now, the tent is the one. So what happened is there is the inner tent and also the outer tent. The inner tent is where in the, the family lives. And then the outer, maybe there are other stuff. So the one that divides from the inner and outer is a curtain. Hallelujah. And in order for that tent to be really stay put on the ground, they need a cord. Yeah. As a, a, you, you need to have a long cord. The more longer your cord is, the more it's anchored well on the ground. Yeah. Now, you need a pegs. A pegs or a uh, stakes. Not the, the ribeye stakes, okay? <laughs> stakes. So what happened is that you need to have a, a, a strong pegs in order to anchor that. Because when the wind comes, it can uh, blow out that, that tent. So what happened is that the Lord is saying that he's asking you to enlarge the place of your tent. God is asking you to make room for him. He's asking why every one of us that you make room for him sometimes god wants to come inside to your tent but you have a lot of stuff <laughs> so much stuff that he can be able to mingle with you that's why god is saying you enlarge yourself you make yourself big not not physically okay Make yourself big, your heart. When your heart is so ready, he can pour out things. That's the very principle of the word of God. Whatever your container is, that's the amount of your fulfillment, your, how God will fill up your container. If your container is a one gallon, he's going to pour out a gallon. But if your container is a big drum, he can fill that. But if your container is like a big swimming pool, he's going to pour that. But your responsibility is to make your container big. It's not his responsibility to make your container your responsibility. So make, your, make a room for him. So Pastor Bob, how can, you make, how can I make a room for him? How can I enlarge myself in, in relation with my family? Then you prioritize him. You come, you bring your family on Sunday service. You come, you always make room. Don't excuse Sunday. Bring them to the presence of God. Don't, don't you know, you can cancel the movie, movie time. Don't cancel Sunday service. You can cancel a lot of dates, but don't cancel bringing your kids to the kingdom of the Lord. Cancel everything. Cancel everything. Don't, don't cancel them in the presence of God. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. What take you time to discipline your, your, your kids? It's only take a suddenly in the presence of God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it takes the presence of God. How, how, about, how about in my personal life? Let's go to your personal life. You know, uh, reading our Bible should be a pleasure not an obligation. It, sh it shouldn't be an obligation. It should be a love affair. Now, but I'm tired. I don't care if you're tired. You can change your attitude. Sometimes you really need to discipline yourself because your body is not disciplined. He, he, this flesh wants to eat. This flesh wants to sleep. This flesh, but you, this 
discipline. Discipline doesn't mean that you are under hard work. Sometimes you really need to do discipline yourself. It's part of a kingdom principle. So, so I don't feel it. Fake it until you make it. You know, marriage is like that. Do you think every morning we are very, ah, hallelujah, I ah, sweet, sweet things, sweet things? Not everything, let me tell you, my wife. Not everything, wife. You, you testify. Do I every, every morning, do I look gorgeous like that every day? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Good answer. Huh? <laughs> you know, <laughs> married, come on, married people. Any married people here? Any single lady here? <laughs> so, you know, commitment. Let's have a commitment. How we make your room to the Lord? Make your commitment spending time with God. And change your attitude. If you feel like I'm, I'm getting pressured, don't be pressured. Then change your, your attitude. I'm just going to do it for the Lord. I put, I put a music there. I put, uh, I put uh, Rachel music there. Or, you know, and Paul and Fone, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know. You know, make yourself. Sometimes, you know, you, you make a sound or, or, or Brianna Dizon song. <laughs> and Caleb, come on. The piano, Caleb, shing, you know. When he does that, it's just something like it's awakened my body, it's awakened my cell, you know. So you make room for him. You know, this is what I like with God. Your cell leader will not see what you're doing. Other people, I may not see what you're doing for the kingdom, but the dear Lord is seeing what you're doing. The amount you give to that poor person, the amount you're praying for that person, everything that you've done, you, not being seen, God is a, a God of rewarder. Why, why, why you want to just uh, try to show off with other people when God can see everything? That's why Christianity should be so good when we go to the workplace. Because your employer is not, it's not your employer. Your employer is God. That's why you can able to give the best for God. Mm, I love this preaching. It's teaching me. Now, enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Remember, there's a curtain that uh, divides them. You, the Bible says you stretch out. Stretching. Who do uh, exercise here? Paul? Everybody, just, just. Cyan. When you do exercise, you just, you just don't just go to a, a vigorous, you need to prepare yourself. Am I right? Take it from me. I'm just kidding. By faith. I've been like two months now, I didn't go to the gym. But anyway, in order for you to prevent injury, in your major muscles and your fine motor muscles, what you need to do is to stretch. Where, where is, uh, like, you got to need to stretch well. Where's Gina? Gina, come here, come here, come here, Gina, Gina. So, let me ask you, this, this is one of the best gymnasts we have. In, uh, come on, shout out to Gina, huh? We love you, Gina. She, she competes other places, and you know she does gymnastics. Now, it, uh, come on. Do we really need to have stretching before any uh, major thing to do? Yeah. And why? Because you pull the muscles. And okay. Yeah. So, so there's an injury. So it pulls your major muscle when you uh, or your muscles when you pull. The problem is you have injury, and you're gonna able to do what you're supposed to do. Um, I know you're in your jeans, but uh, I, I know you can able to put that leg over there. But can you split? Can you do a split? Can you do that over there? Okay. I think it's okay. 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 She, she can do this. She can do this because she knows how to stretch. Okay. Huh? Is that okay, Ate, to stretch? Okay. Do we need a waiver here or, you know, I'm not part of the injury? Okay. All right. How do you stretch? But before, before you uh, do that split, what are the things that you need to do? Uh, do the stretching first. Okay, how do you do stretching for splitting? 
for how do you do the stretch? You first sit down, or like that, okay? And then? Okay, the half split, okay? You have to, like, go down or backwards, and you have to stretch your, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> yeah, your calves. And, <laughs> and then, yeah, and then, and yeah, and then, <laughs> so then, you know, you don't, isn't there like a hamstring or something? Mm -hmm. And they don't want to, you don't, they don't want us to do anything to that either. So, yeah. So that's what, that's doing it now? Yeah, yeah, that's just the half split. And then okay. And, and then after that, what next? You go to the full split. Okay, you, can you do that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You are so good. We're come on, come on. We love you, Gina. Now, she can do that because she... Master it by stretching. Yeah. Now, the problem in here in our Christian walk is that we don't do stretching of our muscles. So when things happen, we are hurtful. The problem, let me, I want you to hear this. Sometimes God want to do something great, yeah. but because your muscles, yeah. your spiritual muscles are not ready, you go, you, you pull yourself, and then I, I will hold back. I cannot do that. Or maybe God is telling you to do something and, no, I'm not ready. Remember, in verse 1, he's so ready to accelerate everything in you. But he wants you to enlarge it. He wants to exercise. He wants you to really to, oh, I want to prepare myself. You know, what are the things that we're talking about? In the, in the muscle of giving. God want to stretch you in your giving for 2015. The more you're going to get in a muscle of serving. I don't want to serve. It's only, I, I, it's only for me. I, I, I don't want, I want, I don't want kids. I don't want to do this. Man, you are ready for acceleration. In a muscle, in a muscle of forgiving. You know, so much that God want to do 2015, but because you have a lot of pain. Come on. Give it away, that pain. Give it to the Lord. Exercise to be broken and to be changed. If you need to go another EGR, come on. We are welcoming you. Yeah. Amen. A lot, lot of stuff. You need, you need to have a spiritual detox. I think for this week, maybe maybe you need to really seek God. I want to have a spiritual detox. I've been so much with the world. I've so much, uh, at, you know, all these things that happened to me fasting on that and just, and just I want to just really lose by the presence of God yeah. Yeah. amen yeah. you know this year um, when we have a pledge in our uh, building uh, funds it's really we decided that we give this amount a pretty good amount that sometimes it's really, it's really stretchful for me and my wife and my family to just give a pledge because we are a pastors and we are the lead. We want to be an example. So we give that amount. It's it's half of our tithes for the whole year, and we gave it. And and God reminded me that sometimes God has blessed us so much. And and the problem is sometimes we owe our things. When we start owning our things, in the first place, that's not yours. And when you start, when I, and God reminded because this is a big amount, and I said, I want to give it, Lord, but I'm just struggling. How's it going to be my bills? How's it going to be? I have, I have credit card bills. I have a, lot, I have a house. I have, I'm still, I have, but God has told me to give. So we gave. And you know what? The Lord has blessed me so much. We're able to fulfill that pledge. And the good thing is God even paid our uh, our ticket going to the Philippines. He, he provided that one. He gave it even uh, a pocket money. He, he is so good. And I said, why? How in the world that the God can do it? Because God, we stretch in the muscles of giving. This summer and, and fall, going to fall, is we stretch in the muscle of our character to be really still with God. You know, you know what situation with that would happen in my, in my family. But we, I, I hold on my pegs really on the floor and I said I will I will hold on we will hold on 
and I see the salvation of God in my family. We have so much restoration. I want to encourage you. What muscle that you need to be stretched? Sometimes we are ineffective because we used to be comfortable. Come on, I want you. You know, I, I pray that 2015, I want to be stretched by God. Because the way how you've been stretched, the way he's able to pour out more in your life. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Now he said here, do not hold back what you're holding from God. What are you holding from our God? You know, is it offense? Or difficulty of life? What, what is it? But you cannot able to overcome it. God is saying this year, you don't need to hold back. Full force. Full force. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm, I, I believe this joy message is going to help us propel for 2015. Yeah. He's just going to give you a, you know, we're, when we're having a meeting with our, the pastors, we begin just to be grateful for one another. And that's really the most powerful thing is that to have a, a, a I, just, I just love this church. I should be, be because I'm the pastor, isn't it? But I just, I'm so blessed to have a great people. It's not about their kingdom, about it's the kingdom of, the, of God. Come on. You are blessed. To, they're not perfect. We are not perfect. But we have a good heart. We want to follow the Lord. We want to lead you well this 2015. But don't hold back. We promise that we will go full force. But are you with us? Your, your coach is, is with us. You know, everybody is, all, is with us. And then that next one is that, next one is lengthen your cords. In order for that tent, you need to have a big cords. Cords, it, it speaks about rich, being rich, can extend. You need to extend it. And the next one is to strengthen the pegs. The peg is the one that really anchor to the ground. Let's kill, you can do that. When your, your pegs is on the ground, what, what really make your feet on the ground as a Christian is the word of God. It's the word, bro. It's the word, sister. It's the word. Love the word. Nothing compared to the word. Everything will pass away. Even your beauty, your muscle, everything is, will pass away. But the one will stay. The Bible says everything will pass except my word. But your, if your feet is anchored on the word of God, see, the only thing that will sustain you from every problem and from every type of your life, every storm, is anchoring yourself. Peg yourself to the word of God. It's the word. You know, God is calling us this year. And, and then in verse 3, you will increase. This is what God is going to do in, in verse 3. You will increase in every direction to fill the world. You know, there's a lot of people hurting down there. And they need help. God is commissioning you to get them. Direction, fill the world. Your offspring. See this. Uh, this is my. Uh, this is my prayer. My offspring will take over the nation. Come on. That's why I hate what the devil is doing. But I know what God is doing more than what the devil is doing. Yes, they want to kill. You want to kill my my daughter, my son? No, you cannot. Because there is a verse fifty four, verse three that said that my offspring will take over the nation. They will take the nation. Your people will be revitalized. Long abandoned towns. And there's a lot of desolate place. You're going to be sent out. 
Now, God is looking for you is this. Think big. Come on, think big. Let me add that. Think bigger. Think bigger. Think bigger. Don't, don't think small. Come on. Let's think big. Let's think that our, our cell group will grow. Let's think that Panam will invade Panam. We'll say the, the, uh, the culture, the campus culture will grow. We see the PC culture, the, the party culture will grow. We'll see that we can have a second service. Not to make us look beautiful. So that the desolate people can come. So that they will experience the presence of God. It's not about you. It's about Him. Now let's think big. I want to I make big. I want to make big. I want to make big for Him. God is a big God. No, come on, let's, let's do it. Let's do just those little things that make you really, oh, she didn't talk to me or, you know. Ah! Oh, Nobody talk to me. So what? Talk to God. Talk to the angels. Mm-hmm. Tired of it. I love you. <laughs> now you grow up, okay? Because there's, please, we bring a lot of people who are, Addicted and all this, and then you don't have nobody talk to me. Please, let's take care of the people down there who are hurtful, painful, abused, you know, all these things. Let's bring into the kingdom of God. Amen. Are you with me? Come on, are you with me? Now let's think big. I'm gonna think big. I'm gonna see the glory of the Lord. I'm gonna see, you know. That's why, see, it takes the mind, your mind, it needs the word of God. The renewing of your mind needs to stretch, stretch, stretch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will. That's why, you know, Thanksgiving, I gave you an assignment that you will not talk, neg- uh, you'll be uh, not complaining. Have you, uh, have you tried that? Did you pass? Oh, no. <laughs> Come, try it again, okay? Try again. Think big, think big, okay? Think big. Second is this, you stretch. When we say, come on, let's just, can you serve? Yes, 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 I will serve. You want to sing? Yes, I can sing. You know. Can you do the children? Yes, of course. Let's serve. Let's stretch. Come on, let's stretch, amen? Come on, let's stretch. What will happen to Rio Grande Valley, to McAllen alone, if everybody of us will be stretching for 2015? What will happen? That when you go to your workplace, you're stretching, you're being a light in your workplace. When I'm stretching, Pastor Bob, I'm doing the best in my, in my patient. Yes, come on. You're stretching. And next is expect. He's a God of wonders. I'm going to ask the worship team to come in a minute. Expect, expect, expect. Like a pregnant woman, you're about to deliver. Do you know that you are all a bunch of pregnant women who are about to deliver babies? But not only only one babies, but quadruplet things in the kingdom here. You have the kingdom inside of you. I mean, I, I'm a pregnant man. Wanting to deliver the kingdom of God to the nation, to the workplace, to Cornerstone, wherever I work, I, I'm pregnant. Are you pregnant? Yeah. Are you expectant? Yeah. Now, don't just expect. Do something about it. Amen. Amen. Now, let me tell you, lastly, in, next, in Isaiah, after 54, the next is what? 55, okay? You're so good, guys. You're so smart. So, in 55, this is what God is wanting you to do. Come, whosoever thirsty, come to the waters. It's the presence of God. Who's ready for the presence of God? Let's all stand up. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to ponder what the Lord has placed in your heart this morning. Let's just have a, a me time with God. Can we do that? A me time with God. You know... If you're here and you never have a relationship with God, you just know God in your mind, and you just know Him, you know, there's no really, you're not, 
that he's not your best friend. You're not connected with him. You're far away from God. The Bible says he's knocking at the door of your heart. He's wanting to be invited. Now, this is what the good thing of our God. He doesn't come to you by force. He comes by invitation. I did that when I was 13 years old. I invited God in my heart. And my life has radically changed. It's not perfect, but powerful. Now, I want to personally invite you. If you want to receive Christ as your personal Savior and your best friend and your God, you can make it that today. It's simple by asking Him to come through a prayer. I will help you with a prayer. But when you pray this prayer, you know, mean it from your heart. While our head bow down, let's pray this. If you, okay? And you pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my God and my Savior and my friend. Forgive me for all of my sins and wash my heart with your blood. Come to my heart and be the driver of my heart. I surrender my life to you. I give it all to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, when you pray that prayer, God came to your heart. You may not feel it or...